here's a quick walkthrough of how I created the scene using Blender Kit add-on, Botanic add-on, and more importantly, VDB Lab add-on from RPD Lab Studio. If you'd like to learn more about VDB Lab, it's available on the official RPD Lab Studio YouTube channel. And these are the videos I follow to understand how VDB Lab works. The multi-domain explosion and the gas explosion. These are beautiful tutorials explaining in depth on how the VDB Lab works. If you'd like to purchase this awesome add-on, please use the affiliate link in the description through which we will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. Thank you. Here I have uh, two planes, one for pond and one for the forest. And for the pond, I just uh, quickly added a, a plane and scaled it appropriately, applied the scale, and then under Blender Kit add-on, I just typed in pond once I checked on the material. And there is this pond ocean water uh, material, and I imported it. And there we go. And let's open a new window. And once we click on the node group, we can see the node setup. And I animated the 4D noise for the pond water. So I chose a frame rate of 24 fps and my scene runs from 1 to 150 frames so at frame 1 i'm going to add a keyframe at w value of 0 and at frame 150 i added a w value of 0.25. Uh, this is for slow moving water. If you want uh, faster waves, then we can change this to 0 0.5. And once we add the keyframes, let's jump into graph editor. And here, if we see it's a Bezier interpolation, let's change it to linear so let's select all the keyframes and interpolation mode linear and once we animate we can see the pond water animating so this is how i created the pond water in just a few minutes now let's see how i created the forest I added another plane. And scaled it appropriately. Apply the scale. And in edit mode. We can subdivide. And for subdivisions to be more even, we can add loop cut here. We can add one more loop cut here. And then subdivide. And the subdivision depends on the resources of uh, the system and the level of detail we are interested in. And we can Sculpt this a little bit. And press Shade Auto Smooth. And we can even add a, a subdivision surface modifier. So it'll be much more smoother. Apply. Perfect. And then let's gather trees, grass, and a few bushes on this plane, forest plane. So for that, I used um, Botanic add-on from Polygonic. 
and to this plane first I will add a botanic asset which is going to be forest floor or I can directly use grass basic A and click OK and there we go we have grass scattered and I just recalculate the density by increasing the max particles to 100,000 and there we go that's more realistic and I switched off the overlays for faster viewport response all right that resembles uh, forest floor and I want this grass to be covered for the entire forest floor and let's add a few trees let's add another asset and this time let's name it trees one and display as textured for now but we're going to change it to bounce because that will improve the viewport performance uh, later and for the trees First, let's reduce this number to just 100. And let's select the type of trees we would like to add. Let's select the tree asset. And click OK. There we go. The entire plane is populated with the trees. But we want certain area of this forest floor to be populated with the trees. So let's take this paint and paint the area where we want the trees to be present. And this is all in real time. And I'm just amazed how much Blender has improved over the years. There we go. Perfect. So we created a vertex group. And similarly, we can add a few bushes here and then rocks as well. And that's what I did. Now, in order to improve the viewport performance while I'm working on the scene, we can actually change the viewport to bounce. And once I turn the overlays on, so this is how I worked on the entire scene. So the viewport is much faster and everything responds much quicker. Perfect. Now, how did I add a missile to the scene? Again, it's pretty simple. Went to the Blender kit add-on, typed in missile. Oh, we got to go to the uh, models there we go we can choose any of this and here we go let's add a camera view so i chose something like this And I change the aspect ratio. To be more cinematic. And here's what he used. And I want the missile to impact at frame 10 on the forest floor. So let me add a keyframe for the location rotation for the empty of the missile at frame 10 
let me change the transformation orientations to local and then press G X. Somewhere over there. Oh, let's get to frame one first. And G X right there. I location rotation. So there we go. That's the animation that we're interested in. Perfect. And let's change the interpolation mode to linear. And once we have this, let's get to graph editor and right click and change the extrapolation mode to linear extrapolation because we want the missile to not stop right here. We want the animation to continue. So it just moves. Perfect. There we go. Let's select this missile and let's get into edit mode. And I separated just a part of the mesh and then duplicated it and then separated by selection. And there we go. This is the one. And I just named it as fire. There we go. This is the one. Let's get into edit mode. Let's press A and press F to add a face to it. So this would be our fire and smoke emitter for the rocket. There we go. And as this moves, the fire emitter moves with it. Perfect. To this particular emitter object, let's get into object, quick effects, quick smoke. And there we go. Let's change a little bit in the emitter section to flow type. Fire plus smoke. And sampling substips, we can increase it to five. And the rest of it and the floor source, it's a planar mesh. And we can leave the rest as it is. And there we go. Let's check the domain. And let's increase it to 128 resolution divisions. And let's edit the domain to fit our scene. All right, and once this is done, let's click on adaptive domain and let's increase the, sorry, let's decrease the threshold. And we can leave the buoyancy density and heat as it is. And we can increase the vorticity to 0.25. Dissolve, and let's dissolve in 10 seconds. And we can add noise uprest under fire. Let's increase the vorticity to one. And let's give it a cache path. And frame start and end. There we go. Now let's see how I added the explosion. Now let's see how to import VDB lab presets. So if we go into presets and if we select the gas option, I selected this particular preset and then I clicked on import preset. So that imports all the related emitters and the domains with the shaders into the scene. 
let's take the first explosion emitter and let's take the first expansion emitter and then let's move them to the location of the impact and let's take explosion 2 and expansion 2 and move them right next to the first one and let's take the explosion 3 and the expansion 3 and then move them right close to the third one there we go and once we play this is the preset animation which is playing and this is the basics of how i created the scene and obviously we have to adjust the forest plane the pond and the camera according to the scene and the shader that uh, the VDB lab provided is pretty good. I also added a shockwave at the moment of uh, impact. And the way I did it is by going into the groups in the VDB lab add on and then add a group. And to this group, I added an emitter. And here I selected the type as shockwave. Let me hide the rest of the emitters. And there we go. That's the shock wave. And I brought it up the plane just a little bit. And then adjusted the parameters as mentioned in the VDB lab tutorial. By working with the inner radius, exterior radius, and then changing the strength and increasing the subdivisions. And if you'd like to learn more about VDB lab, It's available on the official RBD Lab Studio YouTube channel. And these are the videos I follow to understand how VDB Lab works. The multi-domain explosion and the gas explosion. These are beautiful tutorials explaining in depth on how the VDB Lab works. Here's a flipbook recording of the animation. Thank you and stay tuned for more simulations.